Hey everybody, Vince from Wasp here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a full stack app with an Express.js server and a React client in about 10 minutes from start to finish. So this is possible because Wasp is a full stack web app framework built around a super simple JSON-like language that allows you just to describe the features and Wasp will compile and glue everything together for you in the background. So this leaves you with a lot more time to focus on the important stuff and essentially the fun stuff when you're coding. So let's jump right to it. All right, we can create full stack apps without boilerplate by using Wasp's domain specific language to just describe our features like you see here. And today we're going to create a to-do app, just like the example. And we can get started by using this curl command, but I've already got Wasp installed, so I'm going to run Wasp new and Wasp start to get our project started. And once we've got that started, we see the landing page here on localhost 3000. Perfect. Now let's open this up in VS Code and take a quick look. We've got our main Wasp file and we have our outputted client, server, and shared folders. So the main Wasp file is pretty straightforward at the moment. Not much to see here, just the version, title, and a route. So let's add some authentication. This is how easy it is. We add a user. We say we want the typical username and password authentication method. And when the auth fails, we redirect to the login route. And so that Wasp knows what a user is, we have to define one in the database. And we can do that using Prisma schema language. And that's why we use these equal sign PSL to delineate that we're writing Prisma schema language here. And I'm just setting up simple user entity with ID, username, password, and a list of tasks for our to-dos. So now let's find, define the tasks. And the same thing, we give an ID, a description, and an is done tag to let us know, did we complete the to-do or not? And of course, we need to set up our relation of our many to one relation of many tasks to one user so that when we log in, we get the correct user's tasks. And cool, now that we've set up entities, we can see we're getting a nice warning from Wasp that tells us run Wasp DB migrate dev so that we can initialize our database. So we do that, init, pretty simple. And now we've got our database initialized. Let's run Wasp start again. And there are no errors, landing page is up, but kind of boring. So let's get to editing that by going into the client folder. And I'm just gonna replace everything with the logo so we can work on that in a minute. Let's first build our login page. And I'm just gonna copy and paste that in there because it's very simple. But what's important is that Wasp gives you a login form that you can use right away in your components. So you don't have to set up any uh, forms yourself, which is really helpful. And it's the same for sign up. Wasp was able to create these forms based on the information in the Wasp file that we defined. And all that's left for us to do is just style them if we want. Okay, so now let's make sure we protect our main root by adding off required equals true to the main page. And with that, this page is protected. Now let's go ahead and import our other pages. So we have the login root is importing the login page that we just created, as you can see here and the sign up route imports the sign up page. And these are accessible at the paths login and sign up. So pretty straightforward. And we can see now that our main page is protected. So we need to sign up and go ahead Wasp. Oh, and Wasp is also doing some password validation for us. So telling us at least eight characters. So let's change that. Awesome, and we're in. So now we have access to our main page our protected main page, and it was pretty simple. But what is a website without some data? So let's go back to the server and let's create a queries.js file. And this will allow us to fetch our data from the server. And to do this, we need to export an asynchronous JavaScript function, which takes two arguments. Uh, one is the payload or args, and the other is the context, which gets passed in server side by Wasp and has user session info and some entity info. So we can say if the user is not present, we throw the HTTP error and we keep this route server-side protected as well. 
And let's just return a sample to do. With ID one, description, wasp rules. And is done is false. And that will give us something to test out this query. And now we just have to let wasp know about it by defining a query in the wasp file and importing that function, that server side function we just created in our queries.js file. And with that information, wasp will create a similar client side function that we can use to retrieve that data. And we can do that by moving into our main page and importing the use query hook from wasp, which basically is a thin wrapper around react query. And we'll use that to call our newly created get tasks function that wasp created for us for the front end based on our server side function. And that's available at wasp queries slash get tasks. And let's also go ahead and import the really cool use off hook from wasp, which will give our client access to the user object of the signed in user. So let's go ahead and define our user object first with the use off hook. And now we'll have access to the user. And let's also call get tasks so we can retrieve our tasks from the server by passing the get tasks function into the use query hook. And with that, if we are fetching the tasks or if it's loading, we return loading. If there's an error, we return the error on the front end. And since we have access to the user object, let's put the user name in the title there. All right, just to personalize it a little bit. And let's make a note that we want to add the input form for creating a new to do. And when we get the tasks, if there are tasks, we can map through them and we will display each task or each to do in normal React fashion by passing each task object to a to-do component, which we'll create later. And because I just have that in mind, I'll already go ahead and pass the props to the component there. But of course, it's a conditional, so we need to set up what happens when there are no tasks fetched. We want to say no tasks yet. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and create the to-do component, which will take the task and a number as props and handle is done change will just be the change handler function. And for now, we will just log the event to the console just to kind of test it out. Event target checked. And now the component itself will have the number of the to-do and let's create a checkbox so that we can check off our to-dos when they're finished. Want to make sure each input has the task ID so we know which one to update. And then on change, we will pass it the change handler function we just wrote. All right, looks good. And then, of course, next to it, we want the description, what the to-do actually is. And now let's check it out and see if our app is working so far. Awesome. And we're getting the data from our server function and everything seems to work. But let's go back and refactor our query so that we're actually going to pull real data from the database. And remember, I said before that the context object gives us information on our entities via Prisma. So we can just go ahead and call task find many where the user is identical to the current logged in user. Now we want to be able to write to the database. So let's create an actions.js folder. And I'm just going to paste some functions in here as they're very similar to our query. As you can see, we are exporting an async function with an argument for our payload and the context, which allows us to create a new task or in this case to update a task based on its ID. And if you're coding along, this would be a good time to pause the video so that you can catch up as we're now about to move back into the main wasp file and declare these actions. So action create task. This will import the create task function from our actions.js file and 
very important, relate it to the entity task, which I forgot to do here in the query. And this is really important for two reasons. One is that it tells the app to invalidate the cache whenever we have an action on this entity so that our app is responsive and always up to date. And it injects that entity into the context argument so that we have access to the Prisma methods on the server side. And let's do the same for the update task by importing the update task function from the actions.js file and relating it to the task entity. All right, now let's go ahead and import those on the client side, just like we did for queries. And this is one of the great things about Wasp because it takes care of all of the API routes and stuff for us and leaves us to just focus on the business logic. And the difference here with the actions versus the queries is that we can call these directly if we want. So let's import them and you see we have access to them via Wasp. And let's edit the to-do component first so that it updates the task based on the task ID and the new value from the checkbox event. And let's add an error there in case we catch an error. All right, perfect. Now we need to create the new task form and I'm just going to copy and paste it in here because it's pretty similar to the to-do. It's just an import form and we're calling the create task action with the description from the input. So let's go ahead now and add the new task form right there. And let's see how everything looks on our client. All right. We're able to add tasks and update them. Perfect. And here in the console, we can see the server side actions and queries. And as proof that we're actually writing to a database, we can call Wasp DB Studio and Prisma Studio opens up for us on localhost 5555. And there are our tasks. And with Wasp, we've created a full stack app in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm.